Uh, my name is Chris Anizic. Uh I worked at a lot of uh, different open source companies or open source focused companies on um, you know uh, all sorts of projects from Linux to Eclipse and so on. Uh, used to do a lot of recruiting at uh, campuses, and you know one question that came up a lot was, so how do I actually get involved in, in open source, right? What you know where can I start? What can I do? Uh, and I'm like, whoa, that's that's a pretty good question. Like you know everyone has a different open source journey on how they get started. You know especially during my days. Uh, you know, older folks, it was just like Usenet and maybe IRC, and there's a lot less projects. But these days, there's a lot more opportunities to get involved. And so this is just like a short little talk on uh, what opportunities exist these days. Uh, first off, um, I'd like to highlight uh, Google has an awesome program called Summer of Code. Uh, to me, it's the gold standard. Um, you know, there's 100 plus different open source organizations uh, from A to Z that participate, uh, you know, in this effort. Um, so essentially, students get a $5,500 stipend and get matched up to an existing open source project that they get to work on over the summer. If they actually complete, uh, the, pro uh, complete the project, uh, Google flies them out to their campus and there's kind of this whole summit. So it's an awesome way to kind of get involved and it's a very formalized and structured way to kind of get started uh, in open source. And this only happens uh, once a year and applications just open on March 14th, so it's like the perfect time to, to get involved. For those of us who are maybe a little bit younger, uh, pre-university, uh, ages th uh, 13 to 17, Google has another program called Google Codein, which is focused on uh, a smaller list of projects, but it's mostly focused on little bite-sized tasks that you can complete um, you know, as, as, as a younger, younger person. So I um, highly recommend this one uh, for folks that are a little bit on, on the younger side of things. Another great program, uh, which was formerly known as uh, Outreach Program for Women, but now is uh, known as Outreachy, focuses on the, uh, <laughs> we got a fan in the audience, uh, focuses on the uh, underrepresented uh, minorities and groups within um, open source and try to get those folks to participate with different projects. Um, I've personally helped out and mentored uh, with this uh, system. It's, it's awesome, so highly recommend it. The stipend is very similar to, to Google's, um, and this actually happens twice a year. So they kind of have a summer and winter term. Um, the, summer, the summer term is just starting and applications close on the 22nd. So if you're interested, um, you know, please apply. Um, another program that I personally haven't participated in but is pretty popular is Rails Summer of Code. Um, the name obviously implies it got started out uh, you know, within the Rails community, but they actually support 40 plus different projects now from all different languages. So this is another great opportunity for you to get involved in open source and actually get paid for it uh, over the summer. Um, another program that's a little bit smaller, um, only a handful of universities participate in this, is uh, Facebook has something called Open Academy, where essentially um, uh, professors partner with certain open source projects and companies and uh, basically you take a class like you would you know, in any class during the semester and you get credit for working on open source. So it's super cool, but unfortunately not many um, you know, universities participate in this. Uh, another great way to involve, you know, when I grew up, the, you know, there wasn't too many meetups and groups um, out there. There was just some like Linux user groups, but now there's, you know, even universities have uh, open source clubs. Um, there's tons of Node.js meetups and so on. So university clubs, meetups are a great way to kind of get started uh, to meet the community. Um, another thing that's kind of amazing these days, a lot of conferences actually have, uh, you know, diversity scholarships and opportunities for, uh, you know, you to apply and have them pay for your travel um, to, to a conference. Um, you know, for example, PyCon has a really great uh, program for that. Um, a lot of the Linux Foundation events like LinuxCon, MesosCon, and so on have, um, the, you know, diversity scholarship programs. And StrangeLoop is another one uh, that has this. So take advantage, of, take advantage of this if you can. Like, this is a great... Um, way to get involved, especially when you're a student, you're like, you know, money's a little bit tighter. So <laughs> um, another great way to get involved is there's these sites um, that have popped up that kind of present beginner issues. So sometimes people are very nice on GitHub or, you know, Bugzilla, whatever, and tag issues like beginner friendly or newbie friendly. Um, highly recommend checking, you know, these sites out. The two big popular ones are Up for Grabs and uh, Issue Hub that I've come across. So uh, check them out. Uh, and finally, um, you know, uh, hopefully this information was useful uh, to you. You know, it doesn't really necessarily only apply to students, um, you know, but you know, hopefully it makes it a little bit easier for you to get started in open source. And for those of us who actually have been actively participating in the open source community for a while, um, you know, please remember to pay it forward. Like we were all students once, so anything you could do to kind of help someone out uh, and make it easier for them to get started in their project is, is a huge thing. So uh, thank you for your time and I think that's five minutes. <laughs>